here, Seekers. I'm Nick. As Rock sent over one of their 6800 XT Type TXs for us to check out, so we decided to run it through our regular suite of benchmarks on both Windows and Linux and see how this card stacks up against some other GPUs that we've had through the studio. Now, there have actually been quite a few interesting little developments with Linux in the last month, so let's check out what changed. As far as availability of these new 6800 XT cards, from what I've seen, there's zero stock here in Australia and they're basically near impossible to get your hands on. And I can't speak for the rest of the world, but as of filming this video, there are some other vendors cards that are available on Amazon US, but whether or not you can actually get one is a whole nother thing that I'm just not gonna get into. With that said, there's a lot of data to unpack with this video. There's also chapters in all of these videos. So if you wanna to jump to a certain section of a video, it's as easy as mousing over the little progress bar or checking out the timestamps in the description down below. Also, make sure you watch this entire video. Otherwise, you're just not gonna understand the context of what we're trying to say. And these are the out of the box figures with these GPUs. And then we do this for all of our GPU content. And we do this this way because a vast majority of people will never overclock their GPUs, but that's not everyone. But yeah, that's just more indicative of what we found over time. And for people who wanna know how these GPUs overclock, we're gonna come back to this in a separate video because there's a few things that I wanna do with this GPU first. And just to add the last little thing, we don't have any 6800s or 6900 XTs for comparison either. So unfortunately we can't give you those numbers. Anyways, let's get the benchmarks and comparisons out of the way. These graphs are weighted based on performance of all of the cards. Now we've changed the order of these graphs. So yeah, now the graphs also change because different cards perform differently. Some cards get knocked off the graph. Some people don't like it. That's what works for us get used to it. We also use our regular test bench as well because it gives you guys accurate results based on everything that we've ever tested over the last six months or so. So we've been using all the same gear. Okay, let's kick it off with Shadow of the Tomb Raider. You can use that magic little pause button down below at any time to pause the video if you need to take a look at the graphs for a bit longer. The first thing you're probably noticing is that even at 1080p, the 6800 XT is topping the charts, even beating out that ROG 3090. As usual with Linux and Vulkan performance, it's better at 1080p. This is usually the case as well. So what you're seeing is basically the same thing that we see every time we test Linux with Shadow of the Tomb Raider at 1080p. But if we compare Windows versus Linux, Linux again comes out on top and this is also pretty normal for Shadow of the Tomb Raider. At 1440p in Windows, we're only seeing a single frame difference between the 3090 Strix and the Tai Chi X. If we look at Linux, we're seeing that at 1440p, the Tai Chi X is again topping out again. And this is pretty impressive, but there's some things that have changed under the hood with the kernel and everything, but we're gonna talk about that a little bit later. And if we compare Windows to Linux, we're also seeing that Linux again is outperforming Windows. And that just makes me really happy to say something like that. At 4K, we're seeing the performance start to drop behind the 3090 and the 3080, but only by a tiny margin. In Linux at 4K, we're seeing the same thing being echoed with the Tai Chi X coming in slightly behind the 3080s. All right, let's jump into Unige and Superposition. For the Superposition test, we performed three tests in total, 4K optimized, a 1080p extreme preset, and a custom 1440p preset with depth of field and motion blur turned off. We sometimes get comments along the lines of us using stock OpenGL versus DX11 for comparison. We're only comparing the out of the box experience only, except with Superposition, this is where it begins to get interesting. First up with the 1080p extreme benchmark, this one is highly GPU bound and we're seeing the ASRock 6800 XT Tai Chi X perform as expected. So basically in line with the other 6800 XT. In Linux, the OpenGL version doesn't perform as well. And that's what I would say if the latest ACO compiler didn't perform so well. The difference is night and day. If you compare the reference 6800 XT that we tested at launch and we kept this result in just to show you the difference, 
It's absolutely crazy seeing this huge leap in performance. And if we compare Windows to Linux, you can see that the performance is closer than it's ever been with superposition. At 1440p in Windows, the Tai Chi X performs the same as the reference card. But in Linux at 1440p with the new ACO compiler, the ASRock card destroys everything else by an absolute huge margin. Now, this is telling me that we're gonna need to retest all of the AMD GPUs again with this new ACO compiler, but we're gonna do that at a later date. Then if we compare Windows to Linux, we are seeing that for once, with superposition, Linux came out on top. So yeah, that's good to see. At 4K in Windows, we're seeing the Tai Chi X come in just behind the 3080. In Linux at 4K, the Tai Chi X is beating out the 3080, but only by a few frames. If we compare Windows to Linux at 4K, we're seeing them pretty close to parity. Now this graph is also showing us again that we need to retest a bunch of stuff. And the reason why I didn't retest is because I want to show you guys the difference between the older compiler and the newer one. It is absolutely huge and it's night and day. Shout outs to all the teams that put together the new compiler. You've done good. Next up, we're checking out Basemark GPU. Basemark gives us a great indication of Vulkan performance in Windows and in Linux. At 1080p in Windows with the driver update, we can finally get Basemark to complete a 1080p run. At launch, this just was not possible. In Linux at 1080p, the Tai Chi X performs about the same as an RTX 3070. At 1440p in Windows, it shows the Tai Chi X coming in behind the reference 6800 XT. In Linux, we're seeing the same result being echoed with the Tai Chi X, and it comes in slightly behind the reference card. At 4K in Windows and Linux, we're seeing the same trend that we saw with 1440p as well. So nothing really surprising here. This is generally how it goes. We also ran our one hour stress test in Fermark and we couldn't get the ASRock 6800 XT Tai Chi X above 68 degrees in our 18 degree climate controlled office. This result is decent enough. What surprised me more than that was compared to the reference card, the junction temperature was about 15 degrees cooler. And this is obviously to do with the huge cooler on the Tai Chi X, but yeah, we'll come back to this in another video. We're gonna do some overclocking with it, and I have a feeling that this card is going to be very, very impressive. But also be aware that we're running this on an open air test bench. So the results in a closed system, for thermals at least, will be quite different from what we observed here. And we include results like this because we do all of our testing like this, so it means it's consistent across the board with everything. Now, we also decided not to test with smart access memory because we don't currently have an X570 test bench set up or a Ryzen 5000 chip to go along with it. And what we've seen is only marginal improvements anyway. And you can check out our initial reference 6800 XT review if you're interested. And we did all the same performance in that just to give you an indication of how it performs. We'll revisit this a little bit later when it becomes a bit more mature. But for now, if you have a X570 board with the Ryzen 5000 CPU, there's no harm in enabling it. Otherwise, you're not really missing out on that much either. So yeah, there's, there's always a bit of give and take with this stuff. So don't be alarmed if it's slightly slower, if you don't have that kind of setup. As far as power consumption at idle, it was only drawing around 11 watts. And this is about six watts lower than the reference card, which I thought was pretty interesting. We also observed it hitting a maximum board power draw, maxing out at around 288 watts at full load over that period of one hour as well. We also observed the Tai Chi X to be near silent with a little bit of coil wine over our testing period. You have to remember though, on an open air test system, you're gonna hear everything in a closed system. You probably won't hear this card at all. In fact, when I tested this card with the Razer Tai Chi, or so the Razer Tomahawk case, I couldn't hear the card at all. We did exactly the same testing. Acoustic observations make a lot more sense for a normal user because numbers for acoustics and decibels and all that stuff, 
really don't make sense to a lot of people out there. Acoustics are only tangible if the hardware is sitting right next to you and you can physically hear it, right? Otherwise it doesn't make much sense. But what makes this card different to the reference card? The first thing you'll notice is it uses three 8-pin PCIe power connectors. I thought this was a little overkill given its power draw, but yeah, this card is geared towards overclocking, so you probably will need that extra power headroom, but I, I, I hardly find that too surprising, to be honest. It also has an optional bias switch on the card as well, so you can switch between the silent operation and the OC operation. Uh, everything that we tested in this video was in the OC state, so yeah, that's basically the way we always do it. The overall size of this card is actually quite large. It's, uh, it's a little bit bigger than we can actually capture in a video because you can't really get an idea of the sense of the size of the card. It's pretty close to being a three slot card. It's actually technically like a 2.8 slot card and it measures around 330 mils in length. It's got RGB on the card as well that can be controlled in ASRock Polychrome RGB. It's pretty standard stuff really for ASRock cards. However, these ASRock GPUs usually have a physical light switch on the card, which allows you to turn off the lighting without doing anything in software. I like that, especially for people who are going against the RGB trend. As far as pricing for the ASRock 6800 XT Taichi X, it's going for around 830 Australian dollars, or around 1500 Aussie dollars at the time of filming. And Obviously, again, this is subject to availability, which at the time of filming is basically zero. And again, I just want to talk about this Australian pricing because it drives me a bit mad. $300 to $400 more expensive than it should be. It's kind of ridiculous that we get absolutely reamed every single time here with pricing. Let me know what you Aussies out there think. I think it's just too expensive for any GPUs right now. Anyway, also, what do you guys think about the 6800 XT Tai Chi X from ASRock? Uh, I can't wait to get a bit more time with it and push a little bit further. Again, the, uh, the Australian pricing is a bit how you going, but yeah, uh, it's, it's a bit of a hard price to swallow if you're buying it here, but it is what it is. There's not much I can personally do about it. And we get comments from people talking about us like reviewing these cards and us like being dishonest about it, but that's just not how it works. I'm not gonna let a card sit here and collect us and not give you guys information that you might be actually interested in. It's not us being dishonest at all. It's legitimately making a video because that's what you guys wanna see. So usually I actually talk about this in a Q&A video as well. There's always one negative comment that people will focus on and hundreds of positive things that people are asking us to do so we focus on what the majority wants, not just one comment. Anyways, guys, if you like this video, please like and subscribe. If you hated the video, you know what to do. Hit the dislike button twice. Once again, thank you so very much for watching. I'm your boy, Nick, with Gear Seekers. In 2021, you peak. We seek. And uh, you guys asked me not to drink coffee at the start of the video because that was the majority of people saying it. So that's what we do. So I'm going to drink it at the end of the video. Mm. Thanks for watching. It is definitely not whiskey. <laughs> it's not whiskey. No way. I would be wrecked. Yeah. Ooh.